Go. Hi, my name is Chris Fuller. Uh, I'm here at California North State College of Pharmacy in Rancho Cordova, California, and I'm here to present um, antihistamines and the allergic reaction. The objectives of this discussion are to discuss the cell molecular biology of histamine mediated allergic pathway, to explore current and future drug targets, and to present antihistamine drug classes. All right, an antihistamine is a drug which serves to reduce or eliminate the effects mediated by histamine during an allergic response. Histamine antagonists exert their effects at specific histamine receptors. So what is histamine? It is a biogenic amine chemical involved in local immune responses as well as regulating physiologic function in the gut and it also acts as a neurotransmitter. The synthesis of histamine is done so by the decarboxylation of the amino acid histidine, a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme L-histidine decarboxylase. And you can see from the graph here, we start with histidine. Histidine decarboxylase comes in, removes carbon dioxide, and you end up with the final product. The storage of histamine. Most tissue histamine is found in granules in mast cells or basophils. Mast cells are especially numerous at the site of potential injury in the nose, mouth, feet, internal body surfaces, and blood vessels. And you can see the picture here of a mast cell. The red dots represent histamine granules, so very dense in terms of their packaging in a mast cell. The release of histamine. Okay, the first step is the degranulation of histamine release can be uh, triggered by antigen IgE specifically this interaction or by direct chemical stimulation of mast cells. The release of mast cell histamine will cause vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, stimulation of local pain sensing neurons, which can be uh, felt as redness, swelling, stinging, or itching. The beneficial consequences of histamine release are increased local circulation, circulation increased capillary permeability, increased leukocyte mobilization and chemotaxis, and sensation of a foreign object. All of these will help to fight the infection. Some of the harmful consequences of histamine release, which can also be associated with anaphylaxis, are pain, itching, swelling, and in severe cases, drop in blood pressure, and bronchoconstriction and tracheal swelling. This picture represents uh, the allergen coming in, getting exposure to the body, B cells will produce IgE antibodies, which will attach to mast cells in a subsequent reaction. Uh, the antigen will present on the mast cell, which will create degranulation, which in this case here, this is a, a capillary bed, and it's going, to, it's going to loosen up and leak a lot more fluid. All right, the potential drug targets. Uh, the most common one that we're going to talk about uh, is going to be histamine receptors, and these happen in several areas of the body, as well as mast cell stabilizers. And future uses are going to be, uh, or future exploration in terms of drug targets that are histidine decarboxylase inhibitors. So here you can see there are currently known four histamine receptor subtypes: H1 being the most common, H2 mainly in the gut, H3 in the central nervous system and H4 in the bone marrow, and uh, spleen, thymus, small intestine. Uh, they, all four of them are G-coupled protein receptors, H1 being GQ. This leads to an increase, this leads to an increase in IP3, uh, DAG, and intracellular calcium. The end result is going to be uh, smooth muscle relaxation, vascular endothelium relaxation, and in the brain specifically, not really well known. In H2 receptors, it's an S, a GS coupled protein. That's going to lead to activation of increased cyclic AMP, which is going to cause increase in gastric mucosa. Those are the, the main drugs we'll, we'll get to here in a second, exactly what they, what they do. Okay, we'll first discuss the, the first generation or H1, the first generation H1 uh, receptor antagonists. These are the oldest antihistaminic uh, drugs. They're effective in the relief of allergic symptoms, but are typically moderate to highly potent muscarinic acetylcholine receptor antagonists. 
which lead to anticholinergic effects such as dry mouth, constipation, sweating, dizziness. These agents also commonly have action at alpha adrenergic receptors or 5-HT receptors. This lack of receptor selectivity is the basis for the poor tolerability profile of some of the agents, but not all. There are several classes which we'll go through right now. There's the ethylene diamines. This was the first group of clinically effective H1 antihistamines developed. Um, the most common of which is antazoline, and this is used in combination with nefazoline. The ethanolamines uh, have significant anticholinergic as, as adverse events, which include sedation. Um, and they're observed, are observed in this group, but the incidence of gastrointestinal adverse effects is relatively low. And probably the most common one that everyone knows about, diphenhydramine or Benadryl. The alkylamines are considered to have relatively fewer sedative and gastrointestinal adverse events but a relatively greater incidence of paradoxical central nervous system stimulation. Most common one you see here is chlorpheniramine or chlortrimeton being the brand name. Uh, the piperazines produce significant anticholinergic adverse effects. Uh, compounds from this group are often used for motion sickness, vertigo, uh, and nausea and vomiting. And two are very commonly used, hydroxyzine which is Atarax and Meclizine, which is uh, sold under the names of Bonine or Anivert. The tricyclics, structurally related to tricyclic antidepressants, which explain, explains the antihistaminogenic adverse effects and also the poor tolerability profile of tricyclic H1s. Promethazine is a very, very common uh, one in this class, Phenergan, used for a lot of different uh, things. Second generation um, H1 receptor antagonists include drugs like sertirazine, which is Zyrtec, and loratadine, or more commonly known as Claritin. And these drugs are much more selective for peripheral H1 receptors, which leads to an occurrence of adverse reactions compared with first generation, um, but st still very high efficacy, and they're also non-sedating because they can't penetrate the central nervous system or the blood-brain barrier very easily, can't pass through. The third generation H1 receptor antagonists include drugs like levocetirazine, uh, desloratadine, and fexofenadine. Desloratadine is an isolated, is an isomer, pre or isomer of Claritin, so it's called Clarinex. H2 antagonists they block the action of histamine in the parietal cells of the gastric mucosa to reduce the secretion of acid in the stomach. Uh, three very common ones which are actually available over the counter are cimetidine, ranitidine, and famotidine, uh, known respectively as Tagamet, Zantac, and Pepsid. H3 and 4 receptor antagonists, they're still uh, experimental agents and don't have a def defined clinical use. H3 antagonists have stimulant and nootropic effects and are being researched as potential drug targets for the treatment of neurodegenerative conditions such as Alzheimer's. And H4 is uh, more closely related to asthma and allergy treatment. All right, when we talked earlier about some of the uh, future uses, and there are the decarboxylase inhibitors, uh, these agents appear to, I'm sorry, there are, this is uh, mast cell stabilizers and they'll prevent the release of, of histamine from the granules in the mast cell. Uh, it's known somewhat to inhibit chloride channels and thus may inhibit the release of preformed cytokines and several types of inflammatory cells. And the most common one you see is chromalin sodium. Alright, in summary, foreign antigens are produced in allergic reaction. This triggers histamine to be released from mast cells and basophils. Histamine binds to specific receptors to create the sensation of allergies, uh, specifically redness, swelling, itching, and stinging. And the clinical goal of this is to alleviate these symptoms. Antihistamines prevent the binding of histamine to the receptor and block the effect. The histamine receptor is a G-coupled protein, specifically H1 is GS. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it.